Welcome, bienvenue. This is uh, panel seven uh, on In the Theatre, uh, Dans la Théâtre. And um, I am uh, Paul Moore uh, from Ryerson University in Toronto. And I'm um, very excited about this panel, overlaps with my own research uh, very much in ways that I'm eager to learn from all of the panelists. Um, I'll quickly introduce uh, the three panelists and just a, a 10 second synopsis uh, with their title. And then each of them will introduce their point for just a minute or two. Um, and then they'll start with questions to each other. And then we'll open it up to questions um, to uh, uh, others as best I can. And Valentine is going to voice some of the questions en français. And, um, and we will make do and make best use of our time. Uh, first, first of all, Céline Pluquet. She is a doctoral candidate at Université de Paris 8, uh, Saint-Denis. And her paper is on musicians in Parisian cinema programs, 1906 to 1914. And the top level point that I took away from her synopsis is um, that in fact, the musicians in um, uh, pre-World War I Parisian cinemas became stars in and of themselves in a much earlier time uh, than we might have known. Um, and the idea of naming a musician as a star of the program uh, is uh, what she's uh, partly focusing on here. All three of these papers are really about the intermediality of the program and the performance and the um, blend between what's happening in the theater and what's happening on the screen as a multimedia performance altogether. For example, second paper by Mario Sugan. He is a lecturer at Queen Mary University of London, and he is looking at um, early fictional narrators of um, where the lecturer uh, accompanying the film, the Bonaventure accompanying the film is actually a fictional narrator of films. And he's looking there at Burton Holmes, who I had only thought of as a travel lecturer, but he's recovered ways that there's a fictional uh, voice uh, to Burton Holmes' travel lectures um, and other things there. Uh, Gwendolyn Waltz is a third paper I found fascinating. She is a theater historian based in Philadelphia, specializing in multimedia production where film is combined with uh, extra filmic elements in the theater. Um, she's focused in this paper on uh, the, the Edison Trust banning of uh, filmed vaudeville specialties. Um, and so suddenly in 1908, there are, there's a, an end to uh, vaudeville performers filming their specialty acts. Um, and she's uh, traced uh, uh, ways that independent film producers begin to collaborate with vaudeville uh, acts in order to be able to recirculate in the trust era, uh, recirculate their filmed uh, vaudeville as, as part of the specialty. And I am used to thinking of the motion picture specialty as the thing between the vaudeville acts rather than the vaudeville act itself. Um, so I will uh, hand it over to Celine and then Mario and Gwendolyn to just say a little bit more in their own words and to ask questions of each other and we'll open it up for uh, uh, to all of you attending today. Celine. Can I speak in French? Ok, <rire> Thank you, merci. je serai plus à l'aise en français. Euh, bon, mais d'abord, je voulais euh, bah, vous, vous remercier pour cette présentation et puis vous remercier de m'avoir invité à, à partager mes recherches. Euh, donc, euh, ce, cette euh, présentation que j'ai faite, euh, j'ai tenu en fait à, à, à présenter un travail de longue haleine sur la présentation des programmes de salles de cinéma qui sont conservés à la bibliothèque historique de la ville de Paris et qui, euh, 
qui a un fond euh, avec euh, énormément de, de documents et qui est assez euh, complexe à saisir euh, tant par son hétérogénéité que euh, par euh, la, les manques aussi qu'on a euh, dans ce fond-là. Et je me suis attachée plus particulièrement à, à essayer de repérer toutes les occurrences sur la musique dans ces programmes de salles de cinéma. Euh, j'ai trouvé donc euh, deux types d'informations. Une première, une première information sur euh, la valorisation de la musique au sein de la séance. Euh, quel type de musique pouvait être jouée pendant la séance, mais pas pendant les projections, plutôt en interlude en fait. Euh, et ensuite, et là c'est ce dont je parle dans euh, l'intervention que je vous présentais, que je vous ai présentée euh, ici, c'est euh, la, la la no, le, les mentions des, des musiciens euh, euh, avec leur, leur nom euh, dans ces programmes et qui permet en fait euh, déjà de voir euh, l'installation d'une pratique dès la sédentarisation du cinéma euh, qui est euh, la pratique d'accompagnement effectuée par un orchestre euh, et qui permet aussi euh, de voir euh, non pas un processus de professionnalisation mais euh, plutôt moi j'appelle ça un processus de spécialisation des musiciens donc qui vont se spécialiser dans l'accompagnement de, de, de projection euh, dans les salles de cinéma parisiennes. Voilà. Et Mario Yeah, I can, I can continue uh, with my, um, uh, just, I mean, it, it's really going to be a brief summary, uh, essentially just to kind of the repeat uh, three general points that I was trying to make. The first of which, which I guess is the least controversial, and that is essentially that kind of a, a you know, like lecture performance uh, can be easily understood, should be easily better understood as kind of a intermediate text, uh, hybrid text, rather than kind of a thinking about these things um, somehow external to the, let's say, either running of the film or to the lecture. Uh, the second point, which might be a bit more controversial, is that um, uh, kind of a if we, let's say, uh, take seriously uh, some uh, kind of definitions of fictions, which are more from the field of, field of uh, philosophical aesthetics, and if we think about these things, uh, if we think of fictions in terms of what kind of, a, um, let's say, forms of imaginings, forms of imaginings in the sense that you're supposed to imagine something as an audience, uh, then we can also think about this kind of a travelogues, specifically Burton Holmes travelogues, as instances of this kind of a text which do provide these mandates for imaginings specifically due to specific uses of kind of a, uh, the dictical markers and and the uses of kind of a uh, let's say uh, 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 you know present tense and and, and similar let's say uh, li linguistic factors and then as a kind of a, a let's say uh, logical consequence stemming out of this is that uh, we can identify, you know, however we think about, however, you know, uh, we think about these things, or not, uh, in this kind of, a, uh, this is, uh, those earlier debates with, uh, by, by Gunning and Godreau, whether it is a kind of a matter of, um, you know, who introduced this, whether it's with the introduction of cinema, whether it's later with the kind of a, uh, biograph, for instance. So this is a kind of a proposal that you can identify it even, even earlier, and you don't even have to go, uh, let's say, uh, you don't have to tell whether something is, let's say, an editor film, you can identify these things uh, even earlier. So that would be uh, in short. Thanks. And Gwendolyn. Um, I would like to say a few words about the process of researching. Uh, when I submitted my proposal, like many of you, I had planned a research trip that was canceled because of the pandemic. The emphasis of my presentation changed as I made discoveries in online newspapers and journals that I probably would not have examined if I'd been able to leave my house, particularly regarding a number of aha moments about the professional relationships of the people I discuss. Additionally, the method of sharing our conference presentations as online objects to access individually, whenever, and in whatever order we please, 
provide a chance, provided a chance for me to experiment with an interactive presentation format with links to internet materials layered with the text and images of my PowerPoint document, which each of you can choose to experience or not. Uh, I'm a firm believer that obstacles bring about serendipitous opportunities that often are more interesting than the direction we plan to take. And I wish to encourage those of you who are just beginning your explorations of film related topics to have patience with setbacks and unexpected detours. Allow yourself the time and space to embrace redirection and the altered viewpoints it brings to your work. So thank you to all three. There are already um, many questions waiting in the chat, but if, if uh, any of you had um, something as a, a first question to each other, please do. Um, I had a question for, for each of my fellow panelists. Um, Celine, uh, one of my mother's relatives was a pianist for silent films. So as I watched your presentation, I thought about people like her discovering a whole new profession. You say that uh, Paul Fauchy composed operettas and songs. Um, in any of the programs, uh, were, was there evidence that he composed film accompaniments as well? Alors, merci beaucoup pour cette question. Um, en fait, dans les programmes, il y a très peu de mentions, de, surtout avant la guerre, il y a très peu de mentions de, de morceaux qui ont accompagné des films. Euh, donc, euh, euh, Paul Fauché, euh, là, c'est vrai que vous me posez une colle. Euh, je ne suis pas certaine qu'il ait composé des accompagnements pour des films. Euh, il faudrait que je vérifie. Euh, mais effectivement, euh, euh, en dehors de Paul Fauché, ensuite, pendant les années 20, j'ai découvert que de nombreux chefs d'orchestre qui étaient de plus en plus renommés se sont mis à composer surtout des musiques incidentales pour accompagner les films. Donc, pas forcément une partition pour un film, mais plutôt, par exemple, ils allaient composer un morceau qui allait s'appeler « Tempête » pour accompagner des scènes de tempête ou des scènes de guerre, ou alors un morceau qui allait s'appeler « Romance » pour accompagner une scène d'amour. Voilà. Mais concernant Paul Fauché, là, c'est vrai que je ne l'ai pas en tête. Je ne suis pas certaine. I'm waiting for the translation. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, if everybody's shy, I can ask my, my question for Mario. Um, I enjoyed your examination of Burton Holmes' travel lectures as a type of early fictional motion picture narrative. And I'm curious whether this approach had precedence. Have you compared his presentation style to those of other lecturers who used visual media, including uh, magic lanterns and panoramas, as well as those who merely lectured orally? Uh, I think, thanks for the question. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, it seems that Burton Holmes is here a bit of, a, I guess, an outlier in terms of, you know, this particular language. There were, uh, let's say, other kind of uh, other presentation styles which would not, let's say, you know, which would not allow you to make this kind of, a, uh, uh, you know, claims about, uh, you know, claims about invitations of feeling oneself present in this uh let's say you know in the travel there were far more for instance uh again and this again i have to repeat it, it, it really draws much on, on altman's work uh how for instance um uh, uh stoddard for instance had a perfect completely different type of uh uh you know uh, presentation style which was really kind of a factual matter of fact you know this is how this place looks like bam 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 bam, bam. Mm -hmm. uh where as opposed to you know, homes which would be like oh you know uh here we are look at look on your left look on your right walk here this kind of um uh again these are more clearly let's say uh you know uh what's called um uh, sort of pure forms of of you know purely 
kind of actual presentation and purely, let's say, this kind of a imagination inviting. I'm sure that there is a whole uh, spectrum in, in between of how, how this could have played out. Thanks. I could I could continue with questions if that's, <laughs> I, if that's okay. If otherwise, I, or I, I, uh, I will if, with posing a question, or or do you want to uh, kind of hand it over to the uh, chat? Well, I there are there are at least uh, a dozen questions in the chat waiting for the, you. But, then please, uh, I, can, no I can I can always ask my own. I have questions too. Um, uh, <laughs> I'll 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 just mention uh, there's a first question for uh, Gwendolyn from Demetrios about the relation between Thomas and Don and early glass shot pioneers like Warren Newcomb. But I think the essence of the question is that a lot of these um, players in the field have training in a variety of theatrical backgrounds. And um, so I'm paraphrasing a little about um, thinking of your comment about uh, research. Uh, if, if other kinds of sources and other kinds of um, uh, uh, research are, are bringing um, the kind of people from non-filmic, non-theater uh, the, uh, backgrounds into it. So the specific question is about uh, glass shot pioneers and the relation of Thomas with Dawn. Right. Um, that part of my paper, I, I do, I hope I make clear that uh, it's totally conjecture. We have a situation where all these people had uh, Porter as a, a common relationship. They were all in New York at the same time, uh, looking at similar conceptual uh, approaches to uh, the theater and to film. And I don't know. <laughs> uh, I What I think is so wonderful is that these people from very different backgrounds, uh, you know, may have had these conversations. And I, I wish that there was something more specific I could say, yes, they did. Um, and they did influence, but um, it's, it's, it's just something to throw out there. And maybe somebody, uh, just as Tom Gunning uh, threw out a challenge to me to find a, a missing link, um, maybe somebody will find a connection between these people at some time. Um, a question from uh, Luciana uh, Creo de Arreo, sorry. Um, for Celine, a question for Celine. Um, it, you mentioned all women orchestras and the idea of women working as the chef d'orchestre. And uh, she has found similar uh, uh, women orchestras and all women orchestras in Rio de Janeiro. So just a comment about um, women as uh, silent film musicians. Oui. Uh, alors c'est vrai qu'en fait la question uh, des femmes musiciens et, musiciennes uh, est uh, assez compliquée. Uh, avant la Première Guerre mondiale, j'ai trouvé absolument aucune occurrence euh, de femmes musiciennes qui travaillaient dans les salles de cinéma, euh, encore moins chef d'orchestre. Euh, C'est que euh, après la Première Guerre mondiale, euh, donc euh, pendant dans le courant des années 20, euh, en consultant des, des livres de caisses et des contrats de travail de musiciens, que j'ai pu tombé sur quelques occurrences euh, qui euh, montraient qu'il y avait des femmes musiciennes dans euh, les orchestres, mais jamais des chefs d'orchestre, jamais, absolument jamais. Euh, et pourtant, je me suis, je, vraiment, je me suis attachée à, à, à chercher, hein, parce que je me suis posé la question aussi, où sont ces femmes ben, euh, Apparemment, elles étaient là, mais uniquement dans des... Euh, pas mentionnées, parce qu'en fait, elles, elles avaient des... Euh, elles, des places moins prestigieuses que des chefs d'orchestre. Euh, mais euh, j'avais lu une suggestion d'un lecteur euh, dans une revue qui se plaignait de la qualité de l'accompagnement musical euh, en général et qui suggérait alors euh, que euh, l'orchestre soit euh, euh, uniquement composé de belles femmes pour pouvoir... Euh, au moins euh, pallier à la mauvaise qualité de la musique, euh, faire plaisir euh, aux yeux des spectateurs. L'unique voilà. mention très sexiste. Um, I, I will mention um, 
uh, Celine, uh, a follow up also from um, uh, from uh, Danielle, also working in Rio de Janeiro. But uh, in this case, um, uh, some musicians working in dance halls. Working no, no, it's about to fit the I want to refer to it also. Um, so they're, they're... Uh, so Celine again, um, uh, were some musicians also stars in other venues, other kinds of venues, restaurants, cafes, um, dance halls? Euh, oui, euh, tout à fait. Ça, c'est quelque chose qu'on voit très bien, notamment dans le parcours du chef d'orchestre Paul Foss, euh, parce que euh, on a la chance d'avoir euh, son curriculum vitae euh, conservé à la Bibliothèque nationale de France. Et euh, Paul Foss a, a commencé dans des brasseries à Marseille. Euh, ensuite, il a été euh, à Béziers, euh, dans des restaurants. Euh, et, euh, et enfin, il, a, il est arrivé à Paris et il a commencé à ce moment-là euh, à travailler euh, dans les projections cinématographiques au Gaumont Palace. Euh, après, c'est euh, de la même manière, euh, quand j'ai étudié le parcours des autres chefs d'orchestre, donc là, je n'avais pas leur, leur curriculum vitae. Euh, par contre, euh, j'ai pu voir des mentions euh, qui disaient qu'ils euh, accompagnaient euh, des euh, galas mondains euh, ou sinon euh, qu'ils euh, qu avaient rencontré beaucoup de succès euh, euh, lors d'un bal musette euh, sur les bords de la Marne euh, ou tout simplement euh, qu'ils avaient... Qu Il y en a beaucoup aussi, apparemment, qui ont... Qui, qui jouaient dans les kiosques, euh, les kiosques à musique euh, qui ont eu énormément de, enfin, qui ont eu une, énormément d'impact sur euh, la vie musicale euh, en France. Et, donc oui, euh, beaucoup de ces musiciens en fait euh, qui euh, se retrouvaient, qui ont travaillé euh, dans, dans tous ces différents espaces, euh, ont finalement euh, fini par se, se retrouver euh, au cinéma. Est-ce que, um, can, can I just um, <laughs> make an input because I'm checking and helping a little bit uh, Paul Moore and I just want to stress uh, some answers. So Ian Christie just said uh, to Celine and everyone uh, that there were all women orchestras in cinemas in London around 1912-1915 when the Italian spectacle films were in vogue. Uh, and he wrote about it, so we, we have this uh, in, in a reference in how cinemas in London completed the boast about the quality of their orchestras. We also had this um, link made with uh, yesterday's panel, because yesterday's panel uh, has spoken of women orchestral leaders in Brazil. So just to make the connection, I think this was interesting. And I also have um, a question uh, that is <laughs> coming and coming because it was the first posted in the chat and then uh, nobody answered. So um, it's, it's also for Celine, I will just put it and then we can, we can turn to Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn has also like uh, a question from Tammy, I think. Uh, perhaps you can find it, uh, Paul, when I am just, um, taking the one from Louisa Alvim. Uh, so Louisa Alvim just asked a question about the, the musical genre um, that were, <coughs> en fait, je, je peux la dire en français puisque Céline <laughs> dit en français. Uh, C'est la question de la part des genres musicaux. Uh, quels genres sont le plus joués dans les cinémas entre 1906 et 1916 Est-ce que uh, vous avez uh, trouvé uh, justement des indications par rapport au genre puisque um, Louisa uh, Alvim travaille sur les, les, la musique classique et ce lien Est-ce que voilà, est-ce qu'à travers le filtre du genre, il y a peut-être un lien à faire alors, euh, sur la question du genre, euh, malheureusement, euh, j'ai euh, uniquement euh, les archives de Paul Foss qui peuvent me donner une petite idée euh, de ce qui pouvait se passer entre 1913 et 1916, parce que lui, il a commencé à travailler au Gaumont Palace euh, en 1913, non, pardon, en 1911, euh, donc euh, entre 1911 et 1916. Euh, parce qu'en fait il est conservé à la Cinémathèque française euh, les recueils des adaptations musicales que Paul Foss euh, composait pour accompagner les films qui est une source, une mine d'informations euh, et qui est 
voilà, euh, il y a énormément d'adaptations musicales, donc c'est pareil, c'est une source qui est un petit peu complexe à, à maîtriser. Euh, et j'ai surtout, en fait, euh, après des pistes pour la pratique des autres chefs d'orchestre pour le courant des années 1920, parce que c'est à partir de ce moment-là qu'ils ont commencé à témoigner sur leur propre pratique dans la presse spécialisée. Euh, donc, concernant Paul Foss, euh, au début, il euh, y a beaucoup de musique euh, symphonique euh, qui, qui est utilisée. Euh, et en fait, euh, en fait le, le répertoire que Paul Foss utilise est absolument hallucinant. Euh, bon, au début, il y a beaucoup de, de musique symphonique. Et au fur et à mesure, euh, on voit qu'il commence à intégrer euh, de la musique euh, moderne, enfin, donc de la musique française qui lui est contemporaine, euh, parfois aussi euh, euh, de la musique euh, beaucoup plus populaire. Euh, mais bon, après, je suis désolée parce que moi, là, sur ça, je peux surtout parler des années 1920, mais je trouve que c'est quelque chose qui est absolument fascinant. Euh, les chefs d'orchestre, à partir du moment où ils commencent à prendre parole euh, sur euh, leur propre pratique, euh, milite véritablement en fait pour euh, en essayant d'expliquer de, de, à quel point euh, ils, ils, ils sont là pour éduquer les foules à la musique et plus particulièrement à la musique contemporaine française donc il euh, y a énormément apparemment euh, de y avait, on utilisait beaucoup du, du Debussy par exemple euh, du Vincent Dindy euh, du Berlioz, euh, voilà, tout, toute cette musique euh, que, que les chefs d'orchestre avaient envie de valoriser et parfois du coup des musiciens qui étaient connus à cette époque et qui sont totalement euh, tombés dans l'oubli euh, maintenant. Um, I have a question for Mario, thinking of genre as well. Um, as you know, as my editor, I've been trying to write about Archie Shepard and um, part of his Uh, story is um, uh, realistic sound effects and the and the use of um, of uh, the uh, Bonamenter behind the screen with the trap drummers and the sound effects and that and the earliest cases of it I've uh, found are from um, the Spanish American War 1898 um, and so I was just thinking of your work on this paper in is there maybe something about actually the the travelogue or the war film that kind of lends itself to um fictionalization narration ah uh -huh. well i mean i mean i would say there is nothing inherently in the in the genres themselves that would you you know that would kind of a, a you know necessitate necessitate something of this sort i mean i, I don't see For instance, why you know the same could be accomplished if you had a you know particular um, what's it called a particular presentational strategy to let's say you know present a boxing match if you if you were to present it in terms of some kind of a you know imagine yourself that you're there that you're looking you know, that you're I don't know receiving this punch or something like that I think I mean it, I, I think that well yeah probably what what this best emphasize that it's really about the, you know the the film itself you know may or may not be a, a prop for this fictional uh, you know game of make-believe it's really about you know this kind of a you know terms of phrase you can show somebody a you know a, a photograph of a, of a castle and say you know this is a you know this is a castle from from denmark in elsinore or something like that Uh, or you could do the same thing and but saying like you know oof, and and you know imagine yourself walking through these corridors or, or something like that and it's really a kind of a just a, you know this kind of turn of a phrase will su suffice to to from one um, let's say you know mode of reception to another and um if i could just piggyback a question to gwendol and uh, in terms of Uh, theater practices and picture play practices before uh, cinema. Um, trap drummers and sound effects, is that a common thing in, in theatrical um, intermediality before film? Well, there was usually a theater orchestra uh, 
even in uh, you know dramatic plays. And I'm not sure about sound effects though, because um, I'll, I'll I'll look that up though for you and see if I can you know send some information your way. Good good question. Uh, there's a question for Celine. Um, it, uh, there's a French version of it in the chat or in the Q&A. Um, were the BHVP programs collected systematically or is it a limited amount for each room? Does the fund start before 1906? Alors oui, ça c'est une question euh, importante effectivement. Euh, non, tous les programmes ne sont pas collectés euh, systématiquement à la bibliothèque historique de la ville de Paris. Euh, c'est ça qui est compliqué avec le traitement de, de, cette, de cette source. Euh, c'est que c'est vraiment très disparate. Alors, on a, ils ont des programmes dès, euh, dès les débuts du cinéma à Paris, dès les projections euh, du cinématographe lumière. Euh, et, euh, et ça jusqu'à, je ne sais pas jusqu'à quand, mais en tout cas, c'est sûr, au-delà de 1929, parce que moi, je suis allée que jusqu'à cette année-là. Euh, alors, ça va dépendre euh, des salles. Euh, Certaines salles, euh, certaines périodes, on va avoir énormément de programmes et ensuite on va avoir un grand trou et puis euh, plus tard, un, un, plein de programmes. Et puis après, il va y avoir euh, des salles pour lesquelles on aura juste un ou deux programmes sur toute la période d'ouverture parce qu'en fait, ces programmes n'étaient pas collectés systématiquement euh, par, la, par euh, la mairie euh, et... C'est une source qui est, qui est très euh, difficile euh, déjà à conserver. Euh, le papier euh, se froisse, s'abîme euh, et, euh, et qui a été euh, très facilement jeté. Euh, donc, euh, donc finalement, assez rare. Donc on se retrouve avec énormément de documents euh, à, à recouper, mais finalement, euh, ça peut ça peut juste donner une tendance. Ça peut, on ne peut pas avoir une idée précise de ce que c'était. Mais déjà, la tendance, c'est quelque chose quand, à la base, on n'a absolument aucune information. Um, there are a couple of last questions in the chat, but it's, it's even uh, three or four minutes past um, when I initially thought we would conclude. Um, I would like to uh, thank Domator, thank Valentin, thank Tammy, and, um, and especially... Uh, Céline, Mario, and Gwendolyn for, um, for doing an, an online panel in a remarkably good way. <laughs>